Hello, and welcome to the Spiraling Higher podcast hosted by me, Sam, Mindset and Manifestation Coach. And me, Gina, your biz and mindset coach. We're here to support you on your spiritual journey by bringing you intimate and raw conversations about healing, manifestation, consciousness, and spirituality. We hope this podcast makes you feel less alone as you become aware of your patterns and limiting beliefs to uplevel your life, manifest like a boss, and together, spiral higher. Okay, wait, tell me the story about how when someone came over to your house and you were you were having dinner. Yeah. So what we were just talking about how as children, when we grow up, we kind of get accustomed to like our family's way of living, the things that they eat, the way that they talk, the way that they act. And then it takes some time as you start to communicate with your friends and notice how they're operating and the things that they ask. And you're like, wait, like your family doesn't do what my family does. And so I was just the telling the trippiest story. thing about growing up. It is you're the just, trippiest thing. You just don't know. You just, you just literally think that what you're doing is normal, which really speaks to conditioning. And even like within a country, totally. you'll just think that this is normal. Then you go somewhere else and you're like, oh, that's not what you do here. But okay, you have to tell that's this That's so true. But even like I used to move so often, right? Every two yeah. years. And so that was always weird for me. Like that adjustment period of assessing like what's normal for you guys? Like what do you play at recess? And what what are you mm. guys talking about? Like everyone was so different. So anyways, my... Uh, I was, we were having dinner at my place and obviously we're Asian and Korean. So my mom had made us some like, you know, barbecued, like whatever beef and some like rice. And like, I just asked my friend, just thinking that she might want soy sauce for her rice. I was like, oh, do you want soy sauce? And she's like, no, like, why would I want that? And I was like, huh? Oh, okay. She just eats like plain rice. And then she's like, do you have butter? And I was like, for what? I'm like looking at the table, like there's like literally no bread. What would you put butter on? On her rice. No, I know. I get that oh, now. You're like, asking me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, what could you possibly want butter for? And she was like, for my rice. And we all looked at each other like, okay. <laughs> but then she's looking at us like, okay. Yeah. Like, you guys don't use butter for your rice? Like, you guys just eat that plain? It was just the funniest thing. It's and so funny. It's so, cr- I mean, I, I was just telling Gina before that, that the first time I had someone, come over, not the first time, but one of the first times came over for dinner at our house because I had been reflecting (laughs) on a lot of the weird things that I was witnessing in other people's homes and just, you know, just coming to grips with like, wow, like they do things differently. (laughs) Weird. But we had someone come over to our house and in our house, anytime we would have any meat, even if it was like a T-bone steak, we were eating that shit with rice. And (laughs) this girl was just like, do you have potatoes? And I was like, (laughs) For what? What? Why are you asking me that? Like, it just seemed so out of place. I was like, because at that point, I never had steak and potatoes. I'd only ever right. had steak with rice. Yeah. And she was like, I don't eat rice. And I was like, huh? You're like, then what do you eat with your meat? <laughs> she was like, potatoes. <laughs> Wait, wait, we have to talk about this too. Okay, so in Asian households in general, I'm not speaking for everyone, but I'm definitely speaking for me and Gina. But when you come home, you immediately change clothes. Immediately. (laughs) Immediately. It's like Like, the first thing I do. It's like a rule. It's an unspoken rule that you don't just wear what you're wearing to school or like to work in your house. Like you got to change into like an ugly set of pajamas or (laughs) something to indicate that we are now in the home and the day is over. Like whatever we did before, that segment has ended. (laughs) That's over now. The clothing is no longer needed. (laughs) I die every single time. Every time you've told me this story about how you went to your <laughs> tell the story. Wait, who, tell, what story is this? You went to someone's house and it was for a sleepover. And like as soon as you got in, <laughs> as soon as you got inside, you started changing. And they were like, why are you taking are you, your clothes What are you off? doing? I was like, I'm changing. You were like, I'm we're putting home now. I'm home now. I'm putting on my home clothes. And then it would be so weird when they just sat in their jeans in their bed. And I'm like, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing? Did you forget something? <laughs> Like, wait, you're allowed to wear your jeans in your bed? I'm literally crying right now because I just remember, like, it's one of the things I actually remember talking to Joel, my partner, about because I'd be like, I I used to say it all the time. I'd be like, can you take your jeans off? And he's like, why? Why? He's like, Like, we're not going to bed yet. It's (laughs) 5.30 p.m. He's like, why would I take off my pants? And I'm like, um... (laughs) 
because you wore them like all day, all day outside and like I don't know what you sat on like I don't want your jeans to be like on the couch on the bed and he was it took him so long he actually he does change now but it's just so funny like I remember like I used to be this like little like bed police like no one could get on my bed <laughs> until they'd like changed out of like their their day clothes I was like you can't no like you gotta you <laughs> You got to wear your home clothes. You got to change. <laughs> and it's so funny because I started becoming influenced like by my friends, obviously, as I was growing up. I'm going to their house, right? And they're not changing. So then like <laughs> I don't change either. And then there were several times where I would come home and not change. And my mm. mom would be like, yeah. Like she's like, you know, signaling to me to yeah. like, you, you, why aren't you changing your clothes? Or she'd be like, take your jacket off. And I'm like, yeah. I don't feel like it. <laughs> and literally this would be a problem. This would be a problem. Oh, 100%. I mean, the funny thing is, is my mom never really explained to me, or maybe she did, but I don't remember. I didn't really know initially that it was because the clothes were dirty. It was just to me like, you just don't wear outside clothes inside. And that's what's so funny about it yeah. is that you get conditioned to this <laughs> stuff where I didn't even know that that was why. And so when people would ask, and I was like, because they're not home clothes. <laughs> like there was really no <laughs> You didn't have a good answer. <laughs> no, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but then <laughs> after I started to realize, oh yeah, like that makes sense. Especially if you're taking the bus and transit. Like I don't want to be doing that. Also now it's just uncomfortable. It's just uncomfortable, but also like you're conditioned to think it's uncomfortable. And like that's what, true. What you just described is such a beautiful testament to why coaching is so powerful, right? Because mm. you just start asking these questions and you're like, I don't know. Like, yeah. like you might have an answer for like the first question, but then we like go a little bit deeper and then a little bit deeper. And then all of a sudden you're like, I think I made this up or like, yeah. or at least my mom did because this is not a real thing. Like, yeah. And this like, doesn't think exist. about that. You, you, we bought into that. We just believe yes. it. Right. And that's like every other story that we learn. Like, hey, it's not okay to act like that. Don't cry about that. Don't, we don't complain about those kinds of things. We're, we're grateful. We don't talk about those topics. And so much of that is like, yeah, I just do that. And we grow up thinking that that's our personality. And then when you do start asking like, wait, why do I think that? And we kind of uncover like, oh, maybe I don't want to believe that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like really the process of awakening is pretty much exactly this. You realizing yeah. mm, all this stuff that I think or everything that the programming that I like operate under was just not even selected by me. Like mm. I just grew up in this house where we change into different clothes and we eat rice with our steak. Like it's just then when you undergo um, your spiritual awakening or you you start asking these questions, what you really get to decide is like, do I still want that for myself? You know, what yeah. results is that getting for me in my life? And, you know, we're talking about like changing clothes. Like that doesn't really determine, you know, whether you live a fulfilling life or not. Like you can kind of choose to take that or leave it. But there are other things that are unquestioned still sometimes within your awareness that they are actually creating either positive or negative realities for yourself. And so like, those are the ones you really got to get curious about. You're like, wait, do I want this? Is this mm. a belief that I would still choose for myself if I could choose? Like if I were, I always imagine being an alien, you know, coming to earth and I'm deciding like, how do I mm. want to live my life on earth amongst these humans? You know, do I want to choose these beliefs? Do I want to choose these customs and ideals? Like which ones make me feel good? Which ones help me live my best life? And there's a lot that we have just taken on uncondition or unconsciously, right? As conditioning that just, they don't feel great. Like, and that's yeah. the process of really undoing this and unraveling yourself from it. And it's just, it's just so funny because when you can finally see it for what it is rather than as who you are or how you think things are, right? You're so much more empowered to make a better decision for yourself. Mm, I really love that. And I mean, going along with this clothing example too, I mean, it is such a habit for us. And so it would be extremely weird for me to not do that yeah. to not come home and just and to just stay in my clothes like that would be really weird so think about all the other patterns that we're trying to break right now like no wonder it feels so uncomfortable yeah because I would actually be physically uncomfortable wearing my clothes like at home and so you think about these these, these automatic programs that are um, instilled into us from childhood like no wonder it does number one take some time and also it feels so uncomfortable and so foreign it because feels, it's been so oh, automatic that's such a good point and I think 
yeah, I want to talk about emotional suppression being like the norm. Like that's the thing mm. you've been conditioned to do because this is a huge topic, right? We have to work with the emotional body if we want to manifest. We have to be able to recognize and process difficult emotions and recognize and feel positive ones too. Like that's that's also something you might be conditioned to think is weird, feeling happy. Yeah. You know, it is so weird to me Ooh, that if so I'm… True. Yeah, like if I'm skipping down the street, which I often do, you know, people <laughs> look at me like I'm fucking nuts. Like, oh, she's on something. But it's like, really? Like y'all are on something. Like what? Oh like my every, gosh. Everyone's looking at the ground, like looking depressed ass. Like I'm actually happy. Like why are you looking at me like that? But – you know, what is the normal pattern is to just be literally like low key kind of unhappy. That's the norm. Yeah. Like it's you're, normal to just go about your day, mind your own business, keep your head down, like you said, and just basically exist and make it to the next day. Literally, like that's normal. And so if that's your condition pattern, that's your just changing into your home clothes, right? <laughs> Imagine how fucking weird it feels when you're like, I'm I'm just going to be happier. Like I'm, I'm not going to you know, live in this low key state of anxiety and self hatred for myself. Like, I'm just going to actually choose maybe a happier thought. I'm going to focus on something good in my life. I'm going to feel actually good about things instead of dreading things. It's so awkward. Like, it is. and you just feel initially like you're lying to yourself. And it's like, like you said, mm. like if you just sat in your jeans, you'd be like, this is. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this like, one bit. Right. And, 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 you know, changing, you know, this pattern of your, you know, clothes changing, like that, that's not significant. Like you don't, like no one's going to force you to stay in your jeans all day. You're, and you, if, even <laughs> whether you did or you didn't, it wouldn't really create a yeah, different you'd result be fine in your either life. Way. You'd be fine either way. But like this other thing, like feeling happy and creating that pattern rather than falling to the default level of your conditioning, which is like, yeah, just don't really express happiness. Just be like, you know, one of the, common things that we share with people or like what we talk about when we meet up like is complaining it's like yes, you're uh, weird if you show up and you're like everything's going great for me <sighs> which is which is actually why our friendship is so amazing because every time we meet up of course we talk about difficult things but a lot of time we were just like this is what's going good for me right now and I'm like I love that for you this is what's going good for me right now and like we just yes, we just uh, do that but if the conditioned way of being in your friendships is like oh my god like my fucking boss this you know my partner that and then oh my god rock chip in the car it's like that's the norm well, I mean, that's why so many people honestly engage in friendships unconsciously. It's really misery is company, you know, or misery loves company. Um, and it's kind of like, I mean, honestly, I was victim to this too, where I would just kind of meet up with friends to bitch and complain because it mm -hmm. was kind of entertaining. It was like, oh my God, wait till you hear my story. This mm -hmm. person cut me off and then this bitch, you know, yelled at me and then I was, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, no, wait till you, you hear what I ha had to go through. This lady said this to me and this client did that. And like you said, that is normal to spend so much time and energy complaining and obsessing and dwelling on all the bad things that have happened that for me, like, in a lot of those friendships, if I had been like, well, guess what really great thing happened to me? They'd be like, huh? <laughs> yeah. It would almost be perceived as bragging. Well, totally. Totally. You know? And that's that's the conditioned pattern of being in relationship with friends, um, family members. Like, you know, so it is really odd to start doing that within yourself. And yeah. so I, you know, really just ask my clients to be super compassionate with themselves as they begin to change the direction of the pattern because – it is a pattern. Like it is going to feel so awkward. It's like, I don't know. It's like realizing you put your shoes on the opposite feet for so long, but now that just feels normal to you. Imagine oh putting them gosh, on. Totally. Yeah, putting them on the right way. You'd be like, this, this. These, I don't know how to walk. These feel like, wrong. This, this feels wrong. It's like it's supposed to feel wrong. Like you. Yeah. You, you've been doing it the other way for so long, and so I always um, tell my clients, you know, this is really just not an overnight process, and to be super, super compassionate because, you know, I think about. Oh, man. I remember I was in Mexico in June, and one of my friends had this little teeny stray um, rescue chihuahua, okay? And I walked into the apartment, and this dog just started, like, losing its mind and, like, scurrying around the apartment and, like, growling and baring its teeth. And I was like, oh, okay, super friendly dog. And um, <laughs> we were joking about how, like, yeah, she's, she's a rescue, and, you know, she literally just let me pet her, like, last week or something like that. She'd had this dog for three months. And – all I could think when I was looking at this dog was like, oh my God, like that dog is just conditioned to be so afraid. Like it's – like that's not the natural nature of a dog, right? A dog is naturally pretty relaxed and happy 
right? And, mm-hmm. and chill and able to enjoy itself. And I think that's the natural nature of a human too. It is. Like we could just be at peace and like enjoying ourselves and like being in the moment, but we're not conditioned to do that. Like we are very reactive. We are very scared. And so, you know, breaking out of that pattern, it just takes a lot of time. Like that dog, I don't, I don't know if anyone else has pet it since, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's just going to take so long. And um, there was yeah. a, another dog in my office who was also a Mexican rescue. And I remember like the day she let me pet her little head, I was like, yes. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not upset at the dog that she's like that, right? Because right. the dog didn't choose to be abused. The dog didn't choose to become scared. It's just the response to the environment. And so, you know, how many of your unconscious patterns are really just totally like not your fault responses to the environment? Yeah. I mean, that was the other thing too I was going to add is that not only are we conditioned that way and it's a pattern that is literally hardwired into us and it's so foreign to us because of that, it's also foreign to us because there's not a lot of examples around you. I mean, everybody's reinforcing that same way of living. Well, notice too that when you do start to break a pattern, like people will say kind of sometimes negative things to you. Like, right, oh, yeah. like you think you're better than us? Or like, well, that's what I mean. People <laughs> kind of think you're bragging when you're like, oh, everything's going great in my life. And it's like, oh, like you got nothing wrong with you. It's And it makes them uncomfortable because mm. I have noticed that and observed that in my friendships, you know, over the years. And that's the other thing that'll happen too is as you shift the way that you live and the way that you look at life and the way that you respond to life. I mean, I honestly call it spiritual Tetris when we kind of Mm. remove and release things from ourselves bound and we set boundaries and we're kind of moving things out of our life and out of our bodies, out of our minds, out of our spirits that don't belong there anymore. Your, your spirit has to play this Tetris game where it's kind of, now there's a hole there where you used to bitch and complain all the time and now you don't. So like what is going to be filled in that space? So there is kind of that clunky phase, I would say, but also in that, the spiritual Tetris is also people. You know, now you have these spaces for the kind of people that you want to be engaging with. And I know actually, we've actually had quite a few messages um, sent to us recently about me and Sam's friendship and how a lot of people are really either resonating because they have a friend like that, or they're saying something like, I want to have a friend like that. And um, honestly, I think that will happen for all of you as you decide for yourself, like, who are you available for? Mm-hmm. And I think I want to talk about that clunkiness and that space or that gap that you talked about because yeah. that's one of the parts of the spiritual waking that becomes so painful. This is usually the phase of your life where you might even say to yourself, man, I wish I, I, wish I could just go back to normal, right? Yeah. Because you're experiencing the gap right? So initially what was filling the gap was all of these conditioned responses and Mm -hmm. the types of relationships that you were in within this conditioned pattern. Now that you're recognizing the conditioned pattern pattern, and you're like, wait, I don't want to be in a relationship like that, or I don't want to live my life that way, or like, I don't want to be in that energy. Now you can't really engage with these types of people or these types of events and places or whatever, unless they also kind of change, unless they become a vibrational match with you. So sometimes those things will fall away. And that's something I really want to normalize on the spiritual journey is friendship breakups, because those are brutal, man. Like we talk about the romantic breakups, but the friendship breakup is a kicker. And I mean, it's crazy though, because I read somewhere that, and I mean, I, I believe it to be true. It has to be that friendships are the least studied relationship. And I was mm. like, that's so true, but they're the most prominent in our life. Literally the we most important. We have the most friends. That's, that's yeah. the most, the biggest category of relationship that I have. I only have one husband. <laughs> yeah. And your friends really show you who you are. And so this is the thing when you, yeah. when you start changing and they can't reflect back to you like this new version of yourself, then, you know, Sometimes it might be time to move on. And what's really sucky about these types of breakups is that it's not that you even have a problem with this person. And like what's really also hurtful or just difficult in general is like they're not necessarily going to understand like why you're doing what you're doing. They're just going to think like, oh, like she's just being a bitch or like, you know, she just thinks she's too good for me. Yeah, she's changed. Like, oh, well, thank God I've changed, right? But, you know, even like this conditioned pattern of believing that change is somehow bad. It's like, what did they write in the yearbooks? Never change. It's like, really? You don't want me to change? I'm I'm 18 years old. Like, (laughs) hopefully I change by the time you see me next year. Like, yeah. But, you know, that is the patterned way of being. And so, you know, during the spiritual awakening, there is this reordering of elements, right? There's this space that gets created. So a lot of times things fall away. And this is the part where you're like, oh my God, this sucks. Everything Mm -hmm. was kind of better before. Like at least I had friends before. But what you don't realize is that this space is actually going to welcome in 
more of who you actually are. Like you are going to now create friendships or, you know, find yourselves in a line of work or maybe a place that is going to reflect back to you the new version, right? The person that you want to be, not the person that you've been or the person that you think you need to be, right? Mm -hmm. All of that is the conditioning. And, you know, no one's required to like leave behind their conditioning. You can totally keep it right? But the call really is to figure out for yourself, okay, but what kind of life do I have, right? Mm -hmm. And if I want to change the kind of life I have, then I really, I got to change me, right? And so, you know, your life, the people in your life, what you do, it's all a reflection of your mindset, is a reflection of your subconscious beliefs. And so as those change, I just really want to make it normal for you that a lot of things are going to fall away as a result of that because yeah. you're literally elevating. Wait, um, Kyle talked about it as the uh, elevator analogy. Yes, I love that analogy. Yeah. yeah, basically he was saying you're in an elevator when the doors are closed and you don't really know where you're going, but you're trying. You're in pain because you're trying to stay at like level three or level four and all the types yep. of people who were there, the types of jobs who were there. And it's like you're going to a higher level of consciousness. And so it's going to feel like, literally painful if you don't go with it. Like you got to go with the energy and know and trust really that there's going to be so much more that finds you. I mean, it's crazy to me, the kinds of friends that I have now. I mean, obviously you Same. aside, but just in general, I'm like, these people are like fucking awesome. But like yeah. they could, they could, they wouldn't have wanted to be friends with the old me, frankly. Like, oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> you and I would not, and we say this all the time that we met kind of at the perfect time. Yeah. I mean, we both have evolved so much from when we first met a few years ago, but anytime before then, we just wouldn't have been ready, I think, for this relationship, you know? No. Um, but that's so, that's so true. And I think, yeah, I think one of the hardest things is is knowing when to end a friendship, I guess. And kind of, I think, you know, in the last episode with Olenike and the whole selfishness thing, I think that's the hardest part is right. you're kind of like, am I being selfish to walk away from this friendship? You know, they need me or they need this. But I think that was the hardest part for me when I kind of stepped away from certain relationships in my life was the the guilt that comes with it because you do feel bad, like you're, you're hurting them. Um, but really the first question needs to be like, are you hurting you? And been staying. Yeah. Right. And it's like we think that it's like better for us to be hurt than them. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, recently I've been thinking of myself really, I think we talked about in another episode how I'm practicing nonviolence, right? This mm. this yogic principle of nonviolence, of course, between me and others, but really like between me and me. Like, yeah. how am I being violent towards myself? Like, what is my negative self-talk like? How would I treat myself if I was someone that I loved and cared about? And I'm like, why? do I deserve to feel terrible more than this other person? It's not, yeah. you know, it's not a zero sum game. Like what, which person has to suffer more, but really that we both deserve to feel happy in this relationship. Right. And so, yeah, it, it definitely is really hard. I won't beat around the bush, but honestly, it's worth it. And it's also necessary. Yeah. And you don't want to be in a friendship with someone or any sort of relationship where you're not really yourself because then you got to kind of yeah. keep it up. And and honestly, well, I Well, like think is that even being a good friend because you're you're kind of uh, yeah. lying. You're not being truthful. So like you think you're being a good friend because you're like, you know, not telling the truth and quote unquote hurting their feelings. But yeah. you're kind of not being a good friend by not saying what you really think and like allowing this person to kind of like really live in la-la land, right? And yeah. we all, we've talked about, um, not me and you personally, but just in general, like, if you know something, right, between friends or, you know, friendships, do, should you say it? Like, is it your place to say it? And obviously, if the friendship involves you, yeah, it is your place to say it because yeah. you're sitting on a throne of lies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the truth stuff set you, set you free. Um, but it really is true. Like, I almost… I mean, my daughter actually went through something with her friends. I mean, it's actually oh wild God. that she went through it at such a young age already. Um, but it was basically one of her friends, you know, being a little bit possessive, not wanting her to have other friends. And, you know, my daughter just felt so bad telling her that I want to hang out with these other people. But I was like, you have to look at it the other way. You know, telling her the truth, even though it's going to hurt her, is the best thing you can do for her. Yeah. Like, she does need to know the truth. Like, she doesn't, if she actually knew that you were only being friends with her just because you felt bad and you actually did want to hang out with these other people, that would actually make her feel a lot worse. Um, you know, especially for in adult relationships too, right? That we, we're doing a disservice to everyone. Again, like in a romantic relationship, 
I wouldn't want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with me. And they're just there because they feel bad. Like you don't want that either. I think even if it's painful, the ultimate truth is that everyone wants the truth. Mm, And frankly, that everyone deserves the truth. Yeah. I think the hardest part though is really deciphering what the truth is for you. I think that was really hard for me because sometimes, you know, one of my favorite quotes is um, some friendships grow longer, but not stronger. And I'm someone, isn't that so good? (laughs) I think I've heard that one before, but that just really hit. I'm sure I've said that to you before. Oh my um, God. Longer but not stronger. Damn. Because it's true. And you think about it. It's like, but we've been friends for 10 years. So? And it's like, so? <laughs> Are you happy? Is it a relationship that is still, you know, nurturing your what you need now? Because you are a different person now. And I think that's right. the craziest thing too. Like I am a different person now. I have very different needs in a friendship and very different offerings right. as a friend. You're like, this now, is the kind of friend I want to be now. This is what yes. is it? this is what I'm available for. Like you said, I have different offerings as a friend. Yes. Right. Because like, yeah, like you're a mom too. So it's like, no, I don't hang out every weekend. I don't go to these random things. Like th- these are the ways that I hang out as a friend. Right. And that's really setting a boundary and being selfish in the sense that you need to take care of yourself so that you can be a good friend. Right. And you can be these things for your family and your business. But if someone can't rise to that occasion or is not, you know, able to accept that boundary is just a part of what it's like to be friends with you, then do you really want to be friends with this person? Like, yeah, they can't respect your boundary. Right. It's so tough, though. It's really hard. It's really hard. And I think just in general, this whole conversation really is about stepping out of patterns and stepping out of things that are just feel automatic. And and if you are used to always people pleasing and you are always used to staying in friendships for the length and not the strength of the friendship, you know, then it is going to feel weird to all of a sudden now decide, oh, well, maybe I will set this boundary. It is going to feel weird. Again, like you said, choosing happiness instead of feeling suffering all the time. And and I think that first step is really becoming aware of it first, because I think for me, I really identified with being a good friend. And so I thought that meant carrying everything for these people. And what I also learned and uncovered through my therapy was that I was giving off a vibration of this capacity to hold everything for everyone. And so think about the kind of friendships that you're then going to attract when you give off that vibration of, I'll put up with whatever. And I'm going to stay no matter what. I will eat it. I will take it. I'm going to stand here. Whatever you need, you can vent to me. You can yell at me. You can be bad at me. Like, and I just thought that that was me being nurturing and helpful. And Mm -hmm. and then I realized, wait, this is a terrible friendship. Yeah. Or these are terrible friendships. And but it was really hard for me to to set that boundary. I mean, you know. Um, But it has happened to me a few times. I feel like you haven't had as many of these relationships. Um, I feel like you are. (sighs) You know yourself so much. I don't want to say better. I mean, you do. You did. You know what? The thing that you and I identified between us is that I just have a lower tolerance for a lot of things. Yep. Oh, like way lower. Um, Mm -hmm. But that that is something that, you know, had to develop over time too. And um, it's something that I'm constantly working with. Like sometimes, is it that I have a low tolerance? Or sometimes like, am am I just being selfish in the quote unquote bad way right now? Because you just know what your boundaries are and you're very clear mm. on them. Sam doesn't Sammy J doesn't <laughs> Sammy J doesn't do what she doesn't want to do. Whereas that Gina, is true. Gina will do what she doesn't want to do if it makes other people happy. Not not mm. the new Gina. But the old one, yeah, absolutely. Because again, that was normal for me. That was it the was pattern. Totally normal. It was it would be extremely abnormal for me to say, actually, I don't want to do that. Or no, I I I can't meet up and I'm gonna focus on what I need right now. And what was you, funny is like mm-hmm. we were talking about when you start actually changing those behaviors, you're going to witness your world around you right, responding to these changes. And they're 100%. either going to be on board with you or they're going to clash against you. And that's how you're just going to know which parts you can kind of leave behind. Yeah. And like, honestly, this, I just, everything goes back to childhood, of course, every single time. But I'm thinking about um, how, okay, when you were a kid, when you, I know you didn't want to go to church. And your mom was like, you have to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there was different seasons, but I definitely had periods where I didn't want to go. And then a periods where I wanted to go a lot. I feel you like your friends there. Well, yes. And I feel like beyond church, there was probably lots, probably lots of things that you didn't want to do, but your parents were oh, like, for sure. you no, like, like your you're piano going. lessons. Or, yeah. Like you're going. Yeah. 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 Interestingly, within, in my childhood, whenever I said I didn't want to do something, my mom was like, okay, then don't. 
Like literally, she she kind of had my back. There was times in my childhood where even like certain friends wanted to hang out and I just kind of didn't feel like it. My mom would be like, you don't have to go. Do you want me to call them and tell them that I'm making you stay home? Like, she, And I'd be like, yeah, can you? Like, I do that for M all the time. Yeah. And so my yeah. mom actually made it okay that like I just didn't want to do stuff and kind of, yeah, like normalized for me that like it's fine if you don't want to. Whereas mm. I think a lot of children are kind of forced to do things they don't want to effing do. It's like, nope, you're putting on your nice clothes and you're going to this play date or like you're – nope, you're doing this extracurricular thing. And so we're just conditioned once again, like we're not constantly consciously choosing it. It's being put upon us that you just do things that you don't want to do to get to whatever place you think you got to get to. It's like you, you're not consciously choosing for yourself whether you want to do or do something. And so when you get to adulthood, you're still run by these patterns. Like you're not even well, think asking about that. yourself. You're going to go to this play date because we already committed to this or that person's going to be sad or you're going to finish this lesson because we've already paid for it and like you signed up and you're not going to quit. And you're kind of just creating these expectations that, yeah, that you don't say no because you don't want to hurt this person or you you stay committed and you do it anyway, even if you don't like it because you you did sign up originally. So think about how yeah. many people stay in a job you got the job. So it's like, now you got to stay or in the relationship. Now you got to stay. And you know, you go to school, you have to stay in it. You got in the program. So you got to yeah. stay in it now. Um, we don't get to actually change our minds or yeah. listen to what we actually want. And I actually want to bring up my session with Dr. Shafali. If you guys don't know who Dr. Shafali is, look oh into God. her. She is Hero. a phenomenal psychologist. Um, she does a lot about conscious parenting, conscious families. And I actually had a session with her and she shared with me a story. Um, really, she was talking to me about knowing our limits, knowing our capacity, and that women in our day and age, especially, we are kind of taught to not know what our limits are. You know, it really is rewarded and praised to be able to do it all, you know, and, and we handle so much and we have to carry so much and that's normal. And so we really have learned from childhood way into adulthood that we don't listen to our limits. We're not even aware of them. We're not even aware of the capacity from, for the most part. And so anyway, she was sharing that her daughter is going to university right now. And her daughter came home and just said, mom, I'm so, I'm burnt out. This is crazy. This workload is insane. I'm only going to try to pass. I'm just going to barely try to pass. And that's, I'm not going to try any harder than that. And at first, you know, Dr. Shafali's response was kind of like, oh, like, shouldn't you try harder? Like you're already there. But then she realized, no, this is my daughter expressing her limit. Mm -hmm. She's saying that, yes, like obviously school is important, but for me, my capacity is just trying to get by. And that's, that's what I have to give. And she made that okay for her daughter. And I thought that was such an important lesson for me because, you know, of course, I'm signing up my own daughter for piano and different things like that. And there is a little bit of when do you say it's okay to just quit? Like, when do you push them a little bit? But I think, you know, in figuring that out, it's really asking those questions to her. You know, why do you want to stop? Right. You know, do you, do you enjoy it? Are you, what parts of it is fun for you? What parts are not? And really exploring so that the pattern becomes going inward and asking yeah. those questions to decide what do you actually want and are you being driven by fear or anxiety or stories that are not true or are you really being driven by what you really feel inside? Right. And really what this is like showing me on a deeper level is that so many of people's actions or inactions are just all out of guilt. Because mm. lis listen to all the examples you just listed. It's like, we already paid for this, so you got to go. Or like, you already yeah. spent this much time, so you got to go. So it's like, I just feel really effing guilty if I don't, mm. right? And then that becomes your, that just becomes your measuring stick for any decision that you make. It's like, how much guilt do I feel? Like, right? And so right. I call that a fear-based decision versus a freedom-based decision. And a freedom-based decision, there's no guilt whether you do it or you don't do it. There, there's nothing is no self-worth or happiness or expectation is being staked upon it, right? It's mm. just it's just something that you get to decide for yourself. It's like, do does this feel right for me? Like, do, do I want mm. to? Do I want to engage with this? Not like, oh, like, will I feel bad if I don't? And I right. think that's the only paradigm that most people live in. Or it's will like, mom be mad if I don't? Like, yes. What, right? Will they be yeah. disappointed if I don't? It's like, okay, do you want to go to the party or not? And instead of asking yourself, like, how will I feel at the party? Does this feel like something that's going to expand me and like something that's going to feel good for my energy right now? Or is the question you're asking yourself like, oh my God, is she going to be mad if I don't go? And I think right. people don't realize that like that is 
the paradigm of your conditioning. Like that's not mm -hmm. actually how you have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And I have to catch myself still when I find myself in those decision-making processes too, where I'm like, ooh, like what am I trying to avoid? Like is it, am, who am I trying to not disappoint right now? Because I can tell that's a fear-based response. Mm -hmm. And I want none of my decisions to be out of fear. Oh, that was so good. I mean, think about, again, going back to friendships. I think for me, the question often when I was in a relationship that I kind of knew wasn't really working anymore. It was always like, oh my God, but you know, she's not going to understand or it's not going to make sense or she's going to be upset. And oh, she really does need a friend. And you know, maybe she doesn't really mean it. It's all these justifications. And like you said, it's driven by guilt and fear yeah. of what they're going to think. And is this going to make sense to them? Instead of the question of, do you want to be friends with this person anymore? Yeah. And, and it's so Literally. funny because we answer that immediately. The, the person usually knows like, no, but then you follow it up with, you know, then why don't you just leave? And they're like, well, I can't because of all the other reasons that we just listed. And so like you said, it really just goes to show how deep that patterning is. It's so deep that it feels wrong for us to listen to what we actually want. Yeah. And we've talked about this so many times too, but we're so conditioned to view decisions based on like what we're losing and mm. not considering what we're gaining. So going yes. back to that whole like reordering of elements thing, it's like, okay, you might have to crop, draw a boundary, you know, with a friend or with work, whatever. Whatever it is in your life, you continuously compromise yourself in the name of guilt, right? Mm. But every time you make those decisions, you feel like, oh, but if I don't do it, then, you know, this will happen or like this won't happen. And so you're looking at the loss perspective every single time. But yes. there's this whole other realm of reality that you just have completely ignored, right? Which is like, what does this open me up for, right? right. And so just using relationships because we've been talking about that as a theme, right? Romantic or friendship, right? Of course, generally speaking, objectively, a breakup is really difficult, right? But what if you were to look at what you could be gaining from that? It's like, oh, like, who is this going to lead me to? Like, what mm. what space is this going to open up for friends that, like, really light me up and really support me, like, really inspire me? Like, okay, this romantic relationship wasn't very aligned, even though we spent, let's say, 10 years together. But now, who who is the exciting, amazing person that's going to reflect back to me who I'm becoming and, like, where I actually want to go? Because, you know, maybe the person you met 10 years ago, the vision you had with them is just a no longer shared vision. And that's honestly not bad. It just, mm -hmm. it just is like, I think dynamic, you know, change it's, that is the nature of our universe and nothing is static. You know, you look outside and you can see wind moving, you see birds chirping. It's like everything is, is dynamic, but we're so obsessed with static. It's like, yeah. I need to stay in the same relationship, same job, you know, same weight, wake up same every day. It's like, we're not willing to kind of move with the energy. And so we suffer because we're not literally like moving with nature, right? Mm. We're not progressing with it. And so if these changes are not, you know, being reflected in your relationship or in your work that are naturally taking place anyways, right? You're going to feel that sense of stuckness. I think most people feel stuck because there's something within them that's like, okay, like next level, time to evolve, right? Time to literally like, you know, shed the old skin and become the new self, but you're still holding on to it whether that be unconscious mm. or conscious. Well, yeah, I think about that with manifestation too. And so many times people are like, I don't know why it's not working. And <laughs> it's just so funny because a lot of times it's because you're not creating the environment for it to happen yes. because you're so stuck to holding on to the old environment that could only manifest more of the old patterning yes. and the ways that you think uh, and more of the ways that what you believe you're worthy of and what you believe you can have and what, what you believe can happen for you. So the longer you stay in that old patterning and you don't make any changes, then you're going to keep creating that same reality. And it reminds yes. me so much, what going back to what you just talked about, the whole loss versus the gain thing, Kyle Sees talks about this a lot where he says, it's because you can measure what you're losing. You mm. know what you're losing, but you can't measure what you're gaining. Oh, you can't yeah. measure that. And so that's why people automatically infinite. go to, it's infinite. I mean, there's literally infinite possibilities. And even with like the whole, like the, the brain, Joe, Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot, how the brain it like loves anticipating what's going to happen. And so yes. it makes sense that we want to stay in the same box. It's easier. It's more comfortable. It's, it's what makes sense. It feels safe. Um, and again, that's, that's another pattern. That's <laughs> another safe. pattern. And yeah. I mean, frankly, and this all goes back to a really big cornerstone of Joe Dispenza's work, which is breaking the habit of being yourself. And so yeah. every single person who comes into any of my programs or works with me one-on-one, -on -one, I always say my intention by the end of this is that you literally don't recognize yourself. And mm -hmm. almost every person says that. They're like, I don't even 
I don't even remember what I was worried about. They're like, I feel like a different person. And I'm like, great, because this new person is going to manifest a new reality until you literally change who you are, meaning like you need to become aware of these patterns because these patterns are what's creating your reality. And so once mm-hmm. you can notice the pattern and, you know, divorce yourself from the pattern, see the pattern with awareness, now you're not enmeshed with the pattern. Now you can take steps to change the pattern slowly. Mm -hmm. right? Now you're changing the pattern. Now you're changing your state of being. Now you're changing the actions and behavior that are springing from such state of being, thus creating a new reality. And so if you aren't willing to change yourself, then you won't see any change in the reality. 100%. I mean, that's what he talks about all the time, um, Dr. Joe. Um, He says that your personality creates your personal reality. And so many people are trying to change their reality without changing themselves at all, Mm -hmm. right? And I love how he breaks it down because he says that your personality is made up of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Because somebody might think, well, how do I change my personality? Like, that's just who I am. But who you are is really built up of the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And so really the first step is honestly becoming aware of what the pattern currently is. Yeah, what are you thinking? That was the... That was the biggest wake-up call for me. Actually, I just did that with my team today um, where we wrote down what are the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that you are exhibiting right now in your current life that you you don't want to bring with you into the future. Like, what are they? And when they wrote them down, they were like, oh my God, like this is what I'm saying to myself all the time. Yeah. When you actually see it on paper, you can actually feel it. Whereas again, because it's so automatically playing in the background, you don't even know. It's kind of like when you're just in a restaurant, you don't even know. Elevator music. You don't even know. Totally. You don't even know that, totally. you don't don't even know know, what's on. Know that it's there. Yeah. Yes. And so this is the same thing. So first you're going to tune into what's going on. You're going to listen in and you will be amazed. And so when you think about the law of attraction and what vibration you're emitting, a lot of people are like, well, I did meditate today, but it's like, what happened for the other 23 and a half hours <laughs> yeah. for the rest of your day? Because if the rest of your day, you're in that automatic elevator music playing in the background and it's just all automatic program thoughts, that 30 minutes is not going to be enough to shift that vibration to attract what you actually want. And that's why they always say you have to change who you are, you know, your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors to create a new one. And I, the other question that I love, um, anytime I'm kind of going up to a, a decision or not knowing what to do is asking, does it expand me or contract me? And that was a really big one for me when it came to relationships um, to just kind of think like, is this an expansion for me to stay in this relationship and work on it and have it heal? And, you know, or is this contracting me? And sometimes for me, that answer becomes very clear because you can almost feel it in your body where you're like, yeah. Ooh. or oh, yeah, yeah, I think we can do well, this. Yeah. I, if we want to be really binary and like not be like super spectrum based, then really there's only two vibrations and that's fear and love. So, yeah. you know, fear being contraction and love being expansion. You can feel that in your body when you feel small, right? And yeah. then when you, when I feel infinite possibility, I feel so huge. But I want to yeah. go back quickly because I was getting all these visions while you were talking about that part about, you know, hearing the music and not noticing mm. it's going on, right? For yep. those 23 and a half hours. Okay. Breaking out of the matrix is when you begin to hear the music and not yeah. listen to the music or frankly, change the music right? Yeah. It's like the matrix is this just layered conditioning of thought that you don't even realize exists. You just mm-hmm. you just think it's there. Like you don't even know what life looks like, feels like, could be like without that, right? And then you step outside of that layer of conditioning. You develop this higher degree of awareness where now you can see and hear the thoughts, but not notice, not think of them as your own, right? There's almost mm. like this third point of view, right? That takes place right. where instead of like, oh, I'm thinking that I'm fat. It's like, oh, Sam has the thought that she's fat. And then like, you're right. kind of like beyond that, right? So that's when you start to kind of break the enmeshment that you have with the matrix or with the thoughts. And then you can begin to literally change the programming through the awareness. But you can't change the programming when you are the programming or when you're yeah. unaware of the programming. And so, I don't know, that just came through when you were talking about how like, yeah, those 23 and a half hours, like what's going on? What's going yeah. on back there? I mean, it's funny because <laughs> Like, obviously, you and I have been meditating and stuff for a long time, but I can't tell you how many times in the past I have meditated. I'm journaling. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to attract so many good things. And then I get into traffic and I'm like, bitch, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you cut me off or like, oh, like I'm so annoyed. Like the Starbucks line was so long or whatever. And then again, that's so automatic that I was completely oblivious that I was doing that in between. And I remember thinking those thoughts of, well, 
I've been meditating. I mean, I've been journaling. I've been doing all the things. But again, it's like, what is the vibration you're emitting in between? And then, you know, as you keep going on this journey, you're going to start noticing that you almost can't keep holding on to those things that you keep holding on to. I mean, going back to those relationships for me, there it got to a point where I just, I, I became so much of who I really was and who I really am that it just became impossible to stay there. It's, it became impossible to stay in that it's relationship. It's not a vibrational match. It's just not. And so, you know what? Even if you are resisting making the changes, quitting the job, ending a relationship or changing, you know, the way that you act and think and all those types of things, as you go on the journey of that spiritual spirituality and getting to know yourself, it kind of becomes inevitable as you go on that journey that, like I said, things, it's spiritual Tetris. It, things mm. start to just shift and move where you are different. And so your your mind does start to think different thoughts. And so for me, it just became a non-negotiable. I think what became really clear for me was I am just no longer going to betray myself anymore. Mm. I just made a decision like, no, I've done it for so long. And it really was becoming aware of the patterns and aware of the way that I talk to myself and aware of the way that I, I feel about myself and the way that I view myself. And I just made a decision and a very conscious commitment to say like, I'm going to get to know you and I'm going to honor you. And I refuse to betray you ever again, at least consciously. And I think that commitment to myself, it was almost like wedding vows where yeah. I have noticed where there are times where I'm, I am starting to go into the old pattern um, or I am starting to talk to myself in certain ways and I do catch it. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. wait, no, no, we, I'm going to, I'm staying committed. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know what? I, I think a lot of people are so confused on like what it really means like to love yourself. It's like, okay, like, mm -hmm. how do I love myself, right? Everyone's like, self-love, great, I get it. But it's like, it literally just means to treat yourself with basic respect. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally basic decency. Like, sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll hear the thoughts come through, right? The, the matrix of old conditioned thoughts about, like, what I look like or, you know, how little I'm doing or whatever. Yeah. And I'm just like, that is so disrespectful. Like, sometimes… <laughs> how sometimes dare you? <laughs> I'm literally… Like, I will literally yeah. look at the thoughts and be like, that is so rude. Just like I would if someone were to look at me on the street and be like, you look like shit. I'd be like, and you're totally. a bitch. Like, yeah. you know? I wouldn't just be like, yeah, you're right. Like, I, I wouldn't just accept that. Or frankly, I wouldn't be like, yeah, I'm fucking ugly. Like, I wouldn't add like, to I that. I think so too. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, you know what? You might have friendships actually where you do engage in that sort of like… You know, banter mm. that's really like self-deprecating. And like as long as you know you're doing that in like a safe, healthy manner, fine, right? But a lot of people aren't. But you know, how often are you engaging that with yourself? Like you're just you're just playing this ping pong of like, yeah, I suck. Oh my God, even worse today than yesterday. It's like, like, don't give in to that, right? And mm. so when I hear these thoughts sometimes, I really am just like, that is so rude, Sam. Like, that is disappointing. Um, that is not <laughs> like how I'm gonna talk to you. I'm like, or like, I'm not going to agree with that statement. Just honestly, just like when you come to me and you say negative things about yourself, I'm like, mm -mm, can't support that. Like, can't let you think that. <laughs> like, and I, I just, right. I literally won't let you think that for very long. Like my vibration is so different from that, that even you being around me in that energy, you can't stay in that space. And so yeah. I have to almost like be like the higher version of me for me so that like when those negative like egoic thoughts come up i'm like no 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 we're we're not playing that game like we're not we're not doing that that's super mm. rude so if if i'm not saying it to someone like you or if i wouldn't want anyone to say it to emelyn i'm like it's just not going to fly for me like yeah i'm not going to say it I mean, that was what was so wild when it came up with my team after our meeting today, when they wrote down those things, I said, think about if somebody said this shit to you, what, what, think about being in a relationship every day. This is the person you talk to the most and they have access to sending you messages into your brain. Yeah. Like imagine <laughs> how detrimental, <laughs> literally, like think about how detrimental that would be. And no wonder we walk around mostly hating ourselves. It's yeah. because we've treated ourselves like crap for our whole life. Why would you go to someone who thinks the worst of you every time? No wonder I'm not going back to myself. No wonder I'm not going inward. No wonder I wasn't trusting myself because I couldn't even trust myself to like love myself. Yeah. So and no wonder. What's crazy is uncovering with so many coaching clients is that we're not afraid that, you know, that thing that we're going to go for isn't going to work out. What we're actually afraid of is that we're going to negatively judge ourselves if that thing doesn't work out. Because we know that our thoughts can 
our feelings come from our thoughts, right? So yeah. you quote unquote failing, whatever that means, right? You know, that's not what's causing your negative feelings. It's more that you're thinking to yourself, like, I suck or like I fucked yeah. up or like I didn't get it right. That's what's creating your suffering. And so what if you just committed, like, I'm just not going to think that about myself. I'm just going to go for it. And if it doesn't turn out the way I thought it would, I'm going to choose to have the perspective that I am learning a new lesson right now. Or like, you mm. know what? You just started this, babe. It's going to take some time, right? Yeah. I remember even with starting this podcast, you know, there was a couple of <laughs> times where I was getting really effing annoyed about the audio before we upgraded our microphones. Yeah. And you were like, hey, we're just growing and having to get a new pair of shoes. Like, yeah. that's it. Our baby's growing and needs a new pair of shoes and we're going to get some new mics. Right. And my perspective before you said that was just this was not that. I was like making it mean something about me. I was like, oh, well, guess I just suck at this. So, you know, probably should yeah. quit. And you were like, yeah. um, I think we don't we, know what we're doing. You were like, I think we need new microphones. And like, that's yeah. all. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's like, this isn't a massive <laughs> failure. But what we're so afraid of is like our own negative judgment. Yeah. Right. And like, no one else is thinking that about me and the podcast and the audio. It's really just me against me. And so, you know, after really learning to hone this relationship that I have with myself, because it's fucking tough, man. Like, you know, this, like you said, this is the person that I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. You know, I look at myself in the mirror every morning and I'm like, it's me and you, babe. Like we're doing yeah. this today. Like it's, you know what? Like there's a lot of other people in my life that I'm in a relationship with, but the one that really dictates how I function in all of those is the one between me and me. Yes. It's literally the longest relationship you'll ever have in your life. <sighs> it's mean. so true. And I think that when you really begin to go on the journey of just getting to know yourself, you know, mm -hmm. like you're, you're so invested in like getting to know other people and asking them what they like and what surprises them and what makes them happy, what makes them sad. It's like, you don't even know that about you. Like, mm -hmm. and you're just ignoring yourself. You're ignoring your needs. You're ignoring your inner child. And then you wonder, you know, why you're so just upset and like not happy with things. And it's like, cause mm -hmm. you ignored you. Like, figure out for yourself. Like, really, like, honestly, like, you got to kind of date and court yourself and be curious. Oh, I always say that. I always say that. Like, I really do think, like, we are in a relationship with ourselves. So, yeah, whether you like partner, it or not. <laughs> well, what kind of partner are you being? Like, would Ooh. you want to be with you? Ooh. Like, hell no. <laughs> like, that girl is so mean. She thinks only the worst things about me, no matter how much I try. Obviously, not anymore. Um, but it's funny what you were just talking about. Um, not It's not funny at all. But this came up to me. Um, the question that usually happens before you go on this journey, when you do something wrong or something's happening and you're really hard on yourself, we always ask, like, what's wrong with me? Mm. You know, like, oh, there's so many things wrong with me. Instead of asking, like, what's the unmet need? What do I need right now? And I think that question for us really transformed the way that we have compassion for ourselves because immediately it was always like, oh my gosh, I'm so messed up. I'm never going to change. What's wrong with me? I'm, I have so much of this trauma. I'm never going to release. But when I asked myself, what do I need right now? I would just like instantly cry. I remember when I would yep. ask you that, like, what's your unmet need or what's your inner child's unmet need? And then- No, like, you just straight just, up asked me like, what do you need right now? And I'm like, it, it, just, it just immediately pierced through me because I realized- that I wasn't having my need met. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I think about, you know, I forget to water my plants like every other millennial. And I look <laughs> at my plants, you know, sometimes having these yellow leaves and I'm not like, what the fuck is wrong with that plant? I literally am like, oh shit, did I not water that? Or I'm like, oh, right. I haven't had the window open for several days. I should probably open that. I don't, you know, denote negative worth to the plant. Right? Right. I'm like, we need to change the conditions. And frankly, we're plants, we're nature, basically. And sometimes I need a glass of water. Like, sometimes yes. I need to go outside and get some sunlight. Sometimes I need a nap. Like, honestly, it's it's basic stuff. Like, unless you're sleeping, getting sunlight, drinking water, and eating well, th that's like the basic. Like, if, you, yes. if you're not doing just those, like, no wonder you feel effed up. Like, it, so sometimes, yes. but when my husband complains, I'm like, until you've, like, met your basic needs, like, please don't. Like, don't even right. come to me with all the with all the emotionality because, like, a lot of that would be resolved if your physical basic <laughs> needs were met, right? And oh we're not gosh, even meeting so those. We're not even taking care of ourselves. And so, you know, that is another way that you can really develop the self-love is, like, 
literally just taking basic care of yourself like you would any other human. Like if you were in the care or if someone was in the care of you, let's say like an adult who couldn't take care of themselves, I don't know. Like that's what you check in with. Like have mm-hmm. they eaten? Like have they drank water? Like have they had these certain needs met? Like have I spoke to them kindly today? It's like it's mm. so basic and we can't do that with ourselves. And so yeah, like are you really being the type of partner to yourself that you would want to have. And frankly, yeah. what's upsetting for so many people that have abusive relationships, it's like, I'm not blaming the person, right, for being in an abusive relationship, but there is some responsibility to be taken here on some level of like, how are you abusive towards yourself, right? Because if you don't allow abuse within yourself, you will not allow that in your outer no. reality. It's it's like the, it's the no. low tolerance thing, right? I was like Gina was saying, I have a low tolerance for a lot of things and really strong boundaries. So like, there's just literally no way someone's going to treat me like that. And I'm not saying anyways, I think we all know, not trying to guilt people for being in a bad situation, Yes, right? But you know, what you are allowing within yourself can and will be reflected in the physical reality as well. I mean, the personal responsibility portion is a huge one because it's not like I'm walking around being like, well, I, you know, I cut pretty a lot of my life and, you know, good for me and, and I, good riddance on them. It's, it's not like that. I, that's not how I think you need to necessarily decide to, to end a relationship or decide that maybe somebody doesn't fit in there. Um, it can be a, a very kind of loving approach, especially when you take personal responsibility, because I can honestly acknowledge why and how those relationships got to the point that they did because of what I allowed. I didn't have boundaries. And so how it's, it's that whole, um, the, the whole thing about you teach people how to treat you. Yes. And I taught people it was okay to treat me like that. And I'm teaching myself that it is okay for me to talk to myself that way. Mm. I'm teaching myself that, yeah, you can talk shit about yourself as much as you want. And every time you do something bad, you're going to beat up on yourself. That's okay. That's totally fine. I've made that okay. And whereas now, like I said, I really have developed new vows, a new commitment to myself where I said, no, that is not okay in this relationship anymore. Like, absolutely not. I mean, think about it with my daughter too, right? It's not, I mean, she's a, a definitely rule follower, but there's certain things that will not fly. You know, no, she's not going to, I don't know. I'm trying to think of examples, but like there's certain things that it's just not going to be okay. Like we're not going to do that. And she knows that it's a very, very clear boundaries. We just haven't learned how to do those for ourselves. And I think boundaries sounds like stuff that you're not going to do to yourself anymore or things that you're not going to allow. But boundaries also like, what are you going to do? Right. It's like, like, what are those basic needs? Yeah. What are the basic needs? Um, You know, every single day I think about you know, I have these like four pillars um, and they're like very basic. They really just reflect back to you what I just said, but it's like, okay, like, did I get a good night's sleep? If not, like, what am I going to do about that? Am I going to go to sleep earlier today? Mm. Am I going to take a nap in the middle of the day? Like, cause like, this is like basic stuff, right? Yeah. Eat well. What have I eaten today? And, you know, speaking of like things being a vibrational match for you, you know, once you start vibrating with more love, right, you're feeling happier with yourself. There's more self-acceptance. There's more kindness it's actually really hard for you to resonate with a lower density food. So something like fried Mm. food, like I don't crave that stuff because unless I'm at that vibration. So actually what I'm craving is a really good signal of like what I've been feeling and thinking for a while, right? Like Mm. if I have been really down on myself, like then I do crave like French fries and like wings and stuff like that, right? So that's a really good signal too to see like, okay, like what's the relationship I'm having with myself right now and how this being reflected in even my food choices or like who I'm with, Mm -hmm. whatever. But um, yeah, there is definitely going to be a change in like how you eat, like what – what you allow in terms of like friendships and what you allow in terms of like your your work life balance too, right? Like mm-hmm. how normalized have you made it to just like kind of like suffer and do too much at work and like leave little scraps for yourself and like your family? Like how have you normalized that and how can you start to reverse that and really create a lot more space for yourself? But yeah, um, what did I say? I said sleep well, right? Um, yeah. Eat well. So like what choices am I making? Like have I made a positive choice myself for t- for today? Um, move well. So Mm. did I do something to move and shift the energy in my body? It doesn't have to be crazy, although I I do like to exercise, but you know, something to kind of move the energy so I'm not feeling so stagnant. And then think well. Yeah. That's it. It's like, what, what's a kind thought that I can have today? Like, you know, or maybe it's a mantra, you know, affirmations are, 
I understand a lot of the resistance to affirmations. A lot of them are not rooted in what you can believe yet. And so you're not going to experience an energetic signature or like any sort of difference. But affirmations are important because they're sometimes the only part of your day where you consciously choose to say something not negative. (laughs) Like that's, yeah. that's the power that they hold, right? And you don't have to say like, I love myself. You could just choose something a little bit more neutral and it would still make a big difference because if you're not choosing to consciously think a thought, then what thoughts are going on? Just the default ones, right? Like, yeah. like you suck, like you're ugly, whatever. Whatever it is that you're constantly playing on record, that elevator music in the background. And so the affirmation, it, it's not really what you say that's so important. It's really just that you're taking the opportunity like once a day, maybe twice a day to like say to yourself, something just not negative because Mm. negativity might just be the pattern. And you don't even know that like, I mean, life has really changed for me since I became like my own hype woman. Like you guys should, honestly, people probably think I'm crazy. Like in the mornings, I literally talk to myself as I'm getting out of bed. I'm like, we're going to, we're going to kill this day today. Like we got this, like you're going to get out of bed. We're listening to some music. We're going to do it and we're going we're gonna to change some lives. Like I literally talk like that so that I can just I know. get myself up and going and to feel like I'm in that energy. Because like if I don't do that, I think the automatic programming is still so ingrained. Like it's not disappeared, right? It's still there. If I don't do anything, the thoughts will just literally say like, you shouldn't do anything today. Nothing you do works anyways. Like there's literally, literally no point in doing anything. You're just yeah. going to die. Everyone's just going to die. Like, like literally, <laughs> those are the thoughts. It'll be like, nothing even matters. Like, you should just stay in bed all day. Like, nothing matters. But like, that's not who I want to be in alignment with. It's like, or like, yeah. those are not the thoughts that I want to like create my reality. I'm like, I don't, I don't. And so what's important here too is to notice that those thoughts don't have to go away for me to create yeah. my dream life. It's more like, what thoughts do I think and respond with instead? Those can create mm. my dream life. Those thoughts still, that's they, they kind of hang around sometimes. Well, I remember talking to you about that just this past weekend, or was that yesterday? That was yesterday. Um, that the thoughts used to be like right in my ear, yeah, <laughs> like yelling Megaphone. at me. And then now they're like super far where I'm like, what? What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? You know, I'm like, huh? Where it's kind of like distorted and it's kind of cutting out and, or it's just, it's just very, very low volume. And like you said, it's just easy to just have the thought come in. And then I was like, oh no, I don't, I don't actually believe that. And then it just goes away. It's kind of like someone's checking like, oh, did you know that you suck? And it's like, actually I don't suck. And you're like, okay. And it just retreats yes. and goes away. Uh, right. Yes. You just don't, you get to actually converse with that voice and say, oh no, no, that, that we don't have those here. Like we don't, we don't have those thoughts here. And it's like, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost like you have a bouncer to your, literally, your mind, literally. right? Like a security guard. You're like, nope, sorry. And I need to check your ID, please. Nope. Negative comments. They go over there. I'm literally a bouncer in my own yes. brain. I'm like, you yes. ain't getting into the club. Like, yeah, this is super VIP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, kindness only, please. Otherwise, you yeah. gotta go. That's yeah, so totally. funny. It does feel like that. I feel like I'm standing like on guard of like yes. what, like I'm the guard of like what I am consuming. And it's like, though they yeah. kind of float through my awareness, just like a sky, you know, with clouds, right? I see them and I'm just like, nope, nope. And, you know, some of them are so, so, so patterned. So, you know, I'm on my moon right now. And like most women, you just get really effing bloated. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Like I looked five months pregnant yesterday and I was just walking around with my belly like full out. And I was like, look at how pregnant I look. Like I was just like so obsessed with it. But in the past, I remember I would make bloating just mean so many terrible things. It was just like, you know, like, oh, like you shouldn't eat or like, oh, you're so fat or like, oh my God, look, you gained some, all these negative thoughts about me and all this stuff. And now sometimes they'll still come up and I'll just respond to them with like, yeah, but like bloating is just a natural human thing. So like, yeah, who cares? And like my emotional experience of bloating is being determined by how much or how willing I am to believe or not believe those thoughts, yeah. right? Because like the bloating is like neutral. Like, yeah, like your stomach bloats is fine. But if I believe like bloating is bad, like, oh, like right. I, I look like shit or like, oh my God, bloating is, I don't know. I'm trying to think of all these negative thoughts. I, I can't even think of them now because I've, I haven't given them a lot of airtime recently. But a lot yeah. of the responses I've had to that this time and most recently really is just like, if my, if my body wasn't supposed to do it, it wouldn't do it. Like right. there must be some sort of human function and yeah, bloated belly really doesn't mean anything about me. Like my self-worth doesn't decline every time I get bloated, which it literally <laughs> used to, which is so crazy. And I know someone's resonating yeah. with this right now because they're probably like, oh my God, I feel like shit about myself every time I get bloated. But it's like, that's just also you being socialized as a woman and believing that like flat stomach is worth. It's like, 
Well, I remember <laughs> I actually said this to you when you brought up the bloating thing yesterday. I remember when I was pregnant and I had a lot of friends that were pregnant at the same time as me and they would get so offended when someone would say like, oh, like, are you pregnant? Or when someone would be like, oh my gosh, you're a belly. And they're like, oh my God, like they think I look pregnant. And I'm like, you are. Because you are. <laughs> like you are pregnant. And that would be really weird if your stomach didn't get bigger. Like, yeah, that would mean there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. So, and so like you said, it really is that conditioning. Um, and I want to go back to the whole sky analogy too, because um, this this quote really helped me. It's by Eckhart Tolle. And he talks about how thoughts or like clouds, yeah. right? They're just clouds floating by, floating around your, your mind, but you're the sky. Like you don't follow the, the, the sky doesn't follow the clouds, right? The sky's not moving when, mm. when the clouds go. The sky just stays and is just above the clouds. And that's really how I think about my thoughts too. The, the thoughts are just coming and going. It's just a cloud that's existing there and it's going to be gone soon. I don't have to go with that thought. I'm a Above that. And so I really, I really loved that um, comparison because it helped me to understand the separation between my thoughts and, and my spirit. Yeah. Um, and on that note about, about the sky, like I have such an obsession with looking at the sky. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I've been doing a lot more of is I just literally go outside and I stare at how different the sky looks and the clouds look. And you and I have talked about that so many times, but, you know, talking about these patterns, I used to be the kind of person that would just get really embarrassed about doing something kind of silly, but I was recently actually out of town and I was just amazed at the sky. You guys, it was so beautiful. It was so aesthetic. It was pink, lavender and, and blue. And I was just standing there and I just kept saying, oh my God, like, oh my God. And I stood out there with my arms wide open and I could overhear this family being like, is she okay? <laughs> She's been standing there for a long time and she keeps saying, oh my God. And I didn't even realize that I was doing that, but it was crazy because in that moment I was in such appreciation and such love and such just awareness of how beautiful our nature is. And the old Gina just wouldn't have even been, I just honestly wouldn't have even been aware of the sky. Well, well, and, yeah, look at most people, like they're looking at the ground. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if yes. You, if you, and, and I wouldn't have been able to do, even if I wanted to, I would have been like, oh, that's weird. People are going to think this is weird because people did think I was weird because it is <laughs> abnormal for somebody to be standing outside staring at the sky and with their arms wide open, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, wanna, it should be normal. I think that we need to really question like, okay, like what is normal? And like, do I want that? Right. Yes. Because what, what is normal is, you know, kind of like not doing what you love for work, by the way, that's yeah. normal. Right. Yep. Feeling generally unhappy and anxious, normal. normal, you know, drinking and smoking and doing drugs to not feel your feelings or overeating or overworking also normal. You know, yep. these are things that I don't want. And so if, being abnormal is the opposite of that, then I am actually okay with that. Like, yeah, I'm okay with being perceived as, I think most people would think, I don't know if they would say that I'm weird because I feel like I'm the most normal weird person, but <laughs> I am pretty weird when it, when it comes down to it. Like there's a lot of things I don't prescribe to. Um, and you know, I just have to be okay with that. And I've realized that by being more authentically quote unquote weird or abnormal, it's really just opened up space for more people who reflect back the same values and lifestyles and choices. It's like, yeah, we're all just weird together and I love it. And, and frankly, well, I don't think it's weird well, when exactly. you go up to a tree and you're like sniffing it <laughs> so deeply. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be over here staring at the sky. Yeah. <laughs> you well, go do that. Exactly. Like it's just, it's not, we're unweirding it, I guess, or we're normal. We're yeah. really frankly just normalizing, normalizing it. Yeah. And, um, and it's cool because so many of the people who are un unweirding it or normalizing it with me, we're helping to bring <laughs> that awareness to other people. Like, right. Because yeah. I, I, one of my favorite things ever really like about coaching is really just getting to watch someone go from being the conditioned the self best. to the unconditioned yeah. limitless self. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Like the last person I just work with, her name is Cassandra. If you're listening to this, I love you. But, um, she just had this incredible transformation where by the end she was just like, I literally, she was like, I just can't believe I couldn't feel these possibilities before. And she was just like buzzing and feeling so open and like everything was exciting and really like life just became a playground for her again. And that's kind of what you and I have been talking about and reflecting on a lot, which is how we've just gone back to this like childlike version of ourselves where like everything just feels fun now. Like I'm yeah. not staking my self-worth or my identity on any of it. I'm just doing it because it sounds fun. It's like you really you start as a child, right? And you're in this paradigm of 
really playfulness and nothing is being used as a means to an end. Every part of it's enjoyable. It's like, it doesn't even matter um, is joyful. Every part of it, like when you're playing a game, for example, it doesn't actually matter who wins or loses. You're just like stoked that you get to play the game. Like yeah. you just want to play the game. It's like it, who wins or loses, what team you're on, that doesn't even matter, right? And then at some point you become disillusioned and then it, it, it's about winning the game. Right. Yeah. And then you get to finally, hopefully, start to decondition yourself and go back to that original state, which is like, I, I don't need to earn my worth anymore. Like it, mm. I'm worthy. I can just engage with life and work and play in ways that just feel honestly really fun. And I'm finding that the most quote unquote successful people, frankly, those are the ones that are having the most fun. Those are the ones 100%. who are living in creation. You know, when you look at these like I'm thinking of just like the traditional ones, like movie stars, like, you know, people on TV or like making music. It's like, that's fun for them. Yeah. That's literally what they want to do with their time. Of course, with any line of work, there's sometimes like some duties that you might have to do that like don't feel incredibly pleasant, right? Like I'm sure there's parts of being like on tour that could be annoying or whatever. But, you know, for the most part, you're engaging with something for the sake of engaging with it because you love it. You love the art of creation or you love helping people, whatever. And then really like what you create in terms of like, you know, any sort of financial security, whatever sort of assets you gain from that, those are really just a byproduct of you living in such beautiful alignment with what you love. Mm. Well, think about it, you know, with movies and, and, and music, the artists and actors that are the happiest, they're the ones that are actually doing the roles that they actually care about and that are mm. important to them, you know, but the ones that are especially musicians that are signed into a label and they're not even making the kind of music that they like, those are the ones that usually go through some sort of breakdown that we we do see. Um, I mean, look at Britney Spears. Um, yeah. You know, and even Demi Lovato, I watched her documentary. Oh, I know you did too. That was insane. So heartbreaking. And so like now, you know, you see the music that she's making. She really is stepping into who, like what she wants to be and who she wants to be. And, and so I think that's um, a really, really good example that you just shared. And kind of circling even back to the dog thing. Like I just think about, again, the way that we've been treating ourselves. It's going to take time to build that trust mm. because you've been so mean to yourself for so long. You know, if you think about that dog, that, uh, you know, stray dog or that um, yeah. rescued dog, it's not going to come to your house and you give it one treat and it's like, all right, I trust you. <sighs> totally. It's like it's had years of conditioning that this is not safe. People can't be trusted. And so you've had your whole life of conditioning that I can't trust myself. I don't like myself. I always think negative thoughts. I don't have self-belief. I don't have self-love. And so if you just start saying one affirmation to yourself, I mean, it's, it's not going to transform overnight. So really it is a commitment to building that trust. I mean, this is kind of a bad example, but you know, if you were to cheat on someone, they're not going to just trust you immediately. You broke that trust, mm. right? So it's going to take a lot of actions, a lot of, um, I guess, almost evidence and um, in order for you to rebuild that. So I really look at that as what I'm doing right now. I'm building brick by brick, piece by piece. I'm rebuilding that relationship of what I want it to look like. And I'm showing myself that like you can trust me. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to leave. Like, I got you. I'm, I'm here. And I know I haven't been paying attention to your needs, but that's why every time I'm just like, oh, I caught that pattern and I get to rewrite my pattern. I get to actually be there for myself and show up for myself in a way that I never have. And every time you do that, you're building up a stronger foundation yeah. for you to really rebuild this relationship. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. And remember this uh, healing journey, it's not linear. And no, so it's a spiral. It's a spiral and it's, <laughs> it's an upward spiral. And you want it to be linear so bad, but it's just not like, you know, coming back to the the dog example, right? Like I think there could be a day where like it comes up to you and takes a treat and then the next day it just, it just doesn't come out from under the bed at all. And you're like, well, damn it. Like yesterday, it's like, no, it's yes. just, it just doesn't work like that. It's like, it's, yeah. it's such a muscle. It does have to be rebuilt. I mean, speaking of muscles, like some days you feel stronger, some days you don't. But like, you know, oh, yeah. on the general trajectory of gaining strength, like if you keep going, you will be stronger, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, from the time that you started, but like not every day stronger. Like it's, it's kind of, right. right. And so, you know, you have to be willing and that's, that's where the trust comes in, right. Is knowing that even when you're quote unquote, not seeing progress or when it comes to your manifestations, you're not seeing anything physical yet. It's like, how can you continue acting as if and treating yourself in that right. way or holding that vibration regardless? Because that is, that is truly love right? Mm. It is, is staying. It's like, yeah. it's like, I'm not going to abandon you. But it's like, even if you don't believe me or like, even if you don't think, it's like, I'm still going to be here. 
And that's yeah, just- and it makes sense that you're going to be skeptical because mm. of how many times you have let yourself down. So again, like if I all of a sudden, you know, I don't know, I'm just thinking about you and me. But if if our whole relationship, every time you brought a problem to me, I just like berated you and, uh, you know, told you how stupid you were. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, I was like, wow, like, let me hear more. You'd be like, mm, what do you want? Like you, you're almost skeptical, like wh what's happening? Why are you acting like this? This is not normal. And so again, it's just going to take that repeated action of I'm going to show up for you every time. And I love what you just said there that even, even if you're not feeling like you want to do that, you're going to show up anyway. Cause that actually has happened. I remember a couple weeks ago when I was really going through, um, I guess a dark night of the soul. Um, you know, I think I've been doing so much work around self-worth and self-love. And I was like, I mean, I know it, but I, I don't feel it. And I, I know that I'm worthy and I know that these are just thoughts and I, I do want to love myself, but I, I honestly just right now, I, I can't feel it. And so what came through for me in that moment is I know you can't, but I'm going to be here anyway. Like I'm not leaving yeah. and I'm still going to love you anyway. I know you can't feel it, but I do love you. And yeah, that for me really did get me through to the other side of that because I think what was really happening, the unmet need inside was that inner child being like, but are you going to leave now? Like, what about now? And just kind of checking again and again, just like the dog would probably check, like, are they going to hit me now? Like, are they going to, you yeah. know, they're, they're, they're skittish, right? They're skeptical. So be yeah, gentle with yourself as you go on this journey and as you rebuild love with yourself. And um, yeah. It's so crazy because, you know, I love the journey of manifestation because it really is a path back to unconditional self-love. Mm. And yeah. because when you do build that trust and you do rebuild that relationship with yourself and you do feel worthy of your own love, this is when you become, this is when you begin to feel worthy of literally everything else. Like the mm -hmm. only reason why you don't go after those things or you stop yourself or you get in your own way, which is really the only thing that's stopping you from your manifestations, you just keep getting in your own way with like your limiting beliefs yeah. and your judgments, right? Once you believe you're literally worthy of that, that's when you get it. And so, yeah. yeah, like someone who really loves themselves, they have no problem believing that like someone else would be in love with them too. They're like, right. that makes sense. I'm amazing. Or like when someone's like, we would like to offer you a job. You're like, that makes sense. I'm such a hard worker and I've done a great job. Right. But if right. you don't believe you're worthy of that, you'll like self-sabotage literally anything. Yeah. Literally anything. Like even, even if you say manifested this relationship, okay. But you're not in a place of love. You're not ready to receive love from your own self, therefore from someone else. Like when they come to you with love, you're really just going to be skeptical as fuck. You're going to be like, yeah. why do you like me? Like that, I feel like so many girls ask that and guys don't. Guy, guys are, guys do That's not, so true. guys do not ask that. I mean, I'm sure some do, but a lot of girls are conditioned to be like, why do you even like me? Like, why do you like me though? And it's like, well, maybe if you had a reason within yourself to like yourself, you wouldn't be so effing doubtful, you know? After, yeah. after coming up with so many reasons, like why I like myself, I could actually see like why someone would like me. I'm like, yeah, I can right. be quite funny. And, you know, I have these cool interests and I'm sharing them with other people. You know, I'm cool. You know, I go out in nature. <laughs> like, you know, I came up with this list of things that I actually like. And I was like, I think other people might like these things. Right. Yeah. And so you become worthy of receiving everything. And I think that's really the missing piece is that whatever you don't have, you don't feel worthy yet of having. Mm, I always say you don't manifest what you want. You manifest what you believe you're worthy of. <sighs> and I think that's why so many people who are trying to manifest relationships are like, I just keep dating the same guy. And it's like, hmm, I wonder why. Um, and it really is the worthiness work, right? Because you keep on attracting the same kind of guy or the same kind of experiences. And in my case, same kind of friendships or types of relationships that really kept repeating certain behaviors. And I kept showing up in a certain way. And um, it was because I believed that that's what I was worthy of. Mm. Like I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And um, yeah, so it, 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 and I think that's what was so hard for me and on my journey was, well, I, I don't think I'm worthy though. And that really was the work. And again, I was so conditioned to just think those thoughts. But mm. now that thought is like a distant cloud over there. And I'm like, no, 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 we don't, the bouncer comes in and it's like, we don't, sorry. Only people who love Gina get to come in here. <laughs> so and that's true. really my life. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it honestly, like when you really raise that self-love bar within yourself, yeah, like any of the BS is just, is just a no. Like you, once you know what you are worthy of, it's amazing. Like all the stuff that falls away, like you're not willing to yeah. anymore put up with like 
the dude who doesn't care about you. Like, you know, you're just like, ew, literally no. <laughs> like, yeah. right? Because, you know, once you really validate yourself, that's when you manifest everything. You know, right now you're trying to manifest things for validation, right? And that's the wrong way, right? Once you validate yourself, that's when everything that you could ever want just literally chases you. Like Mm. when you are a loving, just aware being and you do things with love and you live in love and you live in acceptance, like who wouldn't want to fucking be with you? Like, yeah, you know, I think of these people who, I don't know, like I'm thinking of like uh, Eckhart Tolle and like Oprah and like a Pima Chodron, like all these people, like they literally like figures of love and light, like Mm -hmm. duh. Like, no wonder everyone wants to be around them. Like, they're just be, – like, why did everyone love Jesus? Like, he was also a figure of love and light. It's like when you find that love and light within yourself, it's so attractive. Not like physically or sexually, mm. but just like you just want to be around it. it. It's like being a freaking, I don't know, like mosquito and like seeing the lights on. It's like you just you just fly over there, right? <laughs> so that's how I think of like yeah. manifestations. Like when I begin to emanate this love and light and acceptance for myself, it's like, yeah, like everything wants to be around me. Like I'm like the highest vibration. Like everything wants to come into my energetic field. I love that. And something that I actually learned um, just in my past careers was – you know, when, when somebody likes you or you're likable, what people really like is not necessarily you, but really how they feel around mm, you. And one. so a lot of times people like being around you when you're miserable because it makes them more uncomfortable. It makes them feel better. Wow. So you're kind of doing it either way. You're attracting the right people to your frequency either way. But you just have to really decide like, what frequency am I emitting right now? Like what kind of friends am I attracting? What kind of people are in my life? And is that okay to my standards? Is Does it pass the bouncer check? You know, and now it's become very, very clear. Um the way that I feel. And then because we're we're emitting this lightness and this love and everything that we're doing is in love, then people are going to like to feel that way around us, right? They're going to like the way that they feel when they are hanging out with us because of of our vibration, our actions, the way that we're carrying ourselves. Whereas the kind of people that, again, are going to like you or like the way they feel around you when you're negative, that's not, they don't really belong in your new reality. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Wow. There's so many, we could go on and on about this. I love this conversation. I love talking about like, this was so good. Oh, we didn't even, we didn't know what this was even going to lead to. That was so fun. I mean, I was wondering how did we even start? We were talking about the, <laughs> the clothes, <laughs> the butter on the rice. <laughs> but those, those were rice. such funny examples because the, it just showed so clearly, like there are just things in life that you don't, ask about like you don't question until until hopefully you get to a point in life where you start looking around you're like okay like other people have figured out something else like do they know (laughs) something I don't know right it's like when you when you go into someone's house and like they do things differently you're like oh like how did you guys know to do that right and so you know that's actually what happened with me when it came to kind of breaking up with my conditioning was I was looking at a lot of people who were in the coaching space and you know spiritual space and a lot of them were creating a lot of these wildly successful online businesses. And I was like, what do they know that I don't know? Like, (laughs) what am I missing? Like, you know, I wanted to go into their house and like figure it out. I was like, you know, what do you guys do here? (laughs) Like, because I was like, whatever I have been doing is not giving me those results. So I think at that point, like two years ago or so, I was really willing to do the work like on me, like, you know, Mm. and and not in a shameful way. I think that's really important. Like, not like a, yeah. oh, wow, like you suck for having all these like dumb Like you need to change. Yeah, like you got to change. Like yeah. you created this sucky reality. It's it's more yeah. like you didn't know that you were doing that. Just like the clothes thing. It's like, that wasn't you. Like, <laughs> right? Like you just thought that that yeah. was normal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful time when you realize that you get to make a choice. Yes. The choice. Oh my God. The power is in the choice. The power is all in the choice. That is where (laughs) all of the power is, the conscious choice. It's like, what am I going to give into? Like, what am I going to say? Like, how am I going to respond? Like, what am I choosing to believe? Like, that is the choice. Oh, man, that's where all the power Mm. is. Yeah. And so I think the biggest takeaway for me is really in this conversation all about setting up your definition and your your. I guess your standards 
of how you're going to communicate with yourself. Mm. Because it really does all stem from there. That is all what manifestation is all about, our healing. All of it starts with us and how we are to ourselves. Because like you said, every other relationship, every other experience is a springboard off of who we are <laughs> and how we're existing, right? And the the status and the state of, of, of our being. So I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, we're we're loving to hear from all of you guys. So thanks for all the messages. I know. Whenever I see the reviews, oh my God, we have to read some of the reviews. Okay, okay so, so the reviews which one do you want to read? The reviews are in, ladies and um, gentlemen, if you're here. <laughs> ladies and gents. And we have just been, oh my God, just beside ourselves with these reviews. And um, it really just shows us that we have really begun to live our mission. Because what we said when we created this podcast was, I just want to create and have the types of conversations that I wanted to hear. Like the ones that would have helped me mm. think differently, that would have reframed my thoughts, that would have made me feel less crazy. And just like, yeah. Yeah. And like, oh, this clunky part of like, maybe friendships kind of falling away or like, you know, that realization of like, it's my response to things, not the situations that are making me upset. Like, you know, oh, like that's the way that I was manifesting and that doesn't work. You know, I, I really wanted to hear that stuff because I felt like there was yeah. such confusing rhetoric around, you know, the spiritual journey. And I think there's also a lot of like, you got to just be happy all the time. Right. And mm. that's not realistic either. And I just felt like a complete no. alien for having all of my feelings and going through the experience of being human. And so if you're a human, no one expects you to do that at least not us. <laughs> no, I mean, that's really what the spark was for our friendship too, right? We were kind of just that for each other. And then it was like, let's let's see if there's other people that might need to hear this too. Ooh, so, okay. Do you have it? I have some of the reviews of, ooh, which one am I gonna read? <laughs> They're so good. Oh, wait, you know what? I should probably pull up some from the Spiraling Higher email. Because I think somebody oh, sent us Oh, yes. Too. Okay, you pull up the one from email. And I'm going to read a couple on Chartable, which I think these show up on iTunes. Yeah, honestly, the only place that I know of that you can leave a review like that is on Apple, Apple Podcast. Okay, well, I'm going to read one right now. This is okay, from our lovely listener, Kesa19, via Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. She said, I totally manifested finding this podcast. I have four weeks now been asking for help in my journey and for somebody to explain it in a way that I can understand. And y'all are it. I am only a teen. So getting this kind of healing work makes me feel so hopeful for my future. I appreciate everything you guys talk about. And if you're reading this and wondering if this podcast is for you, I cannot recommend it enough. Sam and Gina's mm. vibes are immaculate. And I just can't wait for more amazing episodes from you guys. Episodes three and 15 are my favorite so far hope y'all keep doing the thing love the vibes queens mm. thank <laughs> that's you that's actually one of the ones i saw in my email because i just realized you're probably seeing the same ones because these are screenshots of the apple review but <laughs> right sometimes we can't see them all but anyways that was amazing um we really love hearing which episodes you guys really like mm -hmm. and honestly this conversation is very much how me and sam talk it starts on one topic these are just our talks like, wait how did this is literally well, just what happens in our conversation. So <laughs> what's funny is that this was literally a talk because we were waiting for a guest who actually um, had to reschedule, and so we were just mm -hmm. we were just literally talking and laughing. And we were like, "Wait, should we record an episode since we're already here? Like we've already <laughs> set up the mics." So this this conversation was literally just a continuation of what we were already talking about. <laughs> Yeah, literally, this was just a Sa Samina. We call ourselves Samina. This was a Samina catch up. All right. This is from Juanita, who I love and adore. Um, she's always sending us such beautiful messages and comments. Um, so she wrote, this podcast is amazing. Highly recommend. OMG. I love these ladies. Gina and Sam are authentic and the real deal. There has not been one podcast where I have not thought to myself, I am not alone or I'm not crazy. Gina and Sam, thank you for creating this podcast. You have both made a significant impact in spiritual and healing journey, I am spiraling higher. Well, we love spiraling higher with you. So good. <sighs> I can't wait. I can't wait yeah, until, so um, well, we mentioned in our last episode, but we'll just mention it again, probably in November. We should probably confirm that. Yeah. But November, we will have- Yeah, we need to find a date. We will have our first live podcast recording and it will be what, what? with you beautiful people. We want to invite you yes. on and have a genuine conversation where you get to ask your questions and we just have a dialogue and record it. 
as a little manifestation Q&A. So it'll be on Zoom so you can be anywhere. Yes. So if world. you're like, oh my gosh, I need to know about that, then you need to follow our Instagram, which is at Spiraling Higher. And that is where we will post information about signing up to be a part of that. But if you've been listening either just to this episode or to any of the other episodes, we just can't believe you're here. We're so stoked. So just continue spiraling higher with us. If you haven't left a review, we would love to hear your review. Send us a screenshot. Um, Gina, what's the email? Just spiralinghigher at gmail.com. And spiraling is with one L. Um, and yeah, the more reviews and, and comments and things that we get from you guys, the better the podcast will honestly get too, because it does help us to know what you need to hear and, and, and what topics we should cover. Um, but yeah, we're, we're so here for this. And this really is a dream come true. We're so floored. <laughs> We're, we just always screenshot and we're like, look at this. And it really is received with so much love and just gratitude. And ultimately really just what we started this podcast for, we really wanted to build that community and, and meet other people that are going through it with us. And so we appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of our and hearts. We look forward to meeting you on the, on the live zoom, which we will figure out. All right. I guess we'll see you on the next one. See you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to this honest conversation. We hope it brought you peace, clarity, and a little bit further along your spiritual journey. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to us if you left us a five-star rating and review so we can bring you more conscious conversations, spiritual topics, and guests. Here's to spiraling higher.